just help me comment. I can hear you. Hello everyone, I'm so delighted to be with you this great afternoon. Um, I hope that you're doing well today. You've had the rest. Yesterday was May 1st, Workers' Day. And I hope that as a worker, um, even a stay-at-home mom or a stay-at-home dad, you had the opportunity to rest yesterday. It's been a trying time for us in our nation, Nigeria. But the Lord has continued to keep us as a people. And I'm excited because I know that God has plans, more plans, good plans for this nation and for you and your family. So today I said that I was going to begin to share my journey from salvation to deep encounters I've experienced over the years with the Lord. And it's been exactly 25 years since I gave my life to Christ as a teenager, coming back home from school and from boarding house, and I got um, saved. Um, but today, I um, like us to look at, I would like to share my story with you um, about what happened to me, um, the story, what happened in my life between um, when I was born and when um, I got saved. So what does life before salvation really look um, look like? How, what did it look like? What were my experiences? Um, what what are the lessons that I, I derived from growing up that could really help someone today? And God put this body in my heart to begin to share uh, my story um, from salvation to deep encounters. Why? Because that he wants to use it to transform the lives of other people. I really trust that through everything that I share, backed up by the power of the Holy Ghost, your very life is going to be transformed in the name of Jesus. Every Tuesday, we are going to come, connect online by 12 noon to experience this defining moment in our lives. So um, I was born a few, just a few years ago, and I was born to... Uh, my parents, they had a very difficult and trying um, uh, marriage. And at, at the time, um, before, even before I was 10 years old, um, I think when I was seven, um, because of the things that had gone on, my mom felt like she had had enough and she decided to leave. And then we were meant to grow up for a while with our grandparents. But... While growing up, even with our parents, I remember vi vividly that night where um, we were sleeping in our room and my dad had not was not around. He had traveled. And then we didn't know how it happened, but the whole building came, collapsed, you know, on us. The whole building collapsed, you know, fell upon us. And to the glory of God, none of us, you know, got injured. We didn't. I don't think we had a scratch. We didn't have to go to the hospital. The fan, you know, was on. I don't know if at the time where um, the, the ceiling came came off, came upon us. I don't know if the the um, if if the fan or if the, the, there was still light or he had gone up. But I knew that the entire ceiling of his house came upon us. I was about six years, five or six years old, and I had um, three siblings then, and that entire 
um, that entire ceiling came upon us. And it's just because of the mercies of God that I think that none of us died or because we were really young, I was five or six, and then as the first child, and then my younger ones were there. And th those are all part of the things that, you know, the challenges, the way that the enemy saw, um, saw, saw that God had a plan for my life, had a plan for my generation and he just wanted to see that this plan didn't you know was not fulfilled uh, and i think about the times where you know my parents you know had challenges problems quarrels here and there and I, I i became a child in primary school who literally was suffering from hypertension you know uh, my mom had to take me to the hospital a lot of times because i had high bp as a child in primary school and so uh, growing up was really really challenging you know growing up was really really challenging challenging you know at the time when my mom left in 1993 you know um because she had had enough we were dropped with our grandparents we grew up there um thank god my grandparents you know they played their parts in our lives and then in 1996 i had to go to secondary school and one thing my mom did for me was that um, through the struggles, financial struggles and everything she was going through, she ensured that at the time I went to the best um, school and, and, and I, I went to, the, um, to a boarding house and one of the best schools in the state at the time. And she paid the price. She did all she could do for me to get there. And I'm so grateful that um, she... Um, so that seed that in the midst of her pain and in the midst of the trials she was going through, she saw my education as very key, you know, as very defining as though she had a picture of the future that God has shown her in her heart. I remember those days as a child where uh, there was, there would be a crisis in the home and all my mom could do do was to cry, you know, at night while praying. And I remember her uh, call, waking me up by 12 midnight a few times as a child who was about four or five years old and, 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 and reading the Psalms with me and asking me to pray, you know, and, and that is how defining a life of prayer could be. My mom could not have understood so many things, but one thing she understood was that she had a God that she could call upon, you know. So one of the things I have learned from my years as a child growing up is just the efficacy of what prayers can do, even a life that's even to a life that seems shattered and battered. And so every seed that will sow in the life of our children today cannot and will not go to waste. At the time, I didn't really know what church was. At the time, I didn't really know what it meant to be born again as a four-year-old or a five-year-old. And then when my mom left, you know, I was about seven years old, um, the first child, and had three other, you know, people after me, other siblings after me. And then she ensured that I went to um, a boarding house, went to a, a very um, standard secondary school. And... Um, I remember vividly that um, we went to um, the Catholic church for a very long time, staying with our parents too. And one of the key things for me here is that God found me early. God found me early. The truth is that I come from a generation of people, of godless people. I come from a generation of people who do not know the Lord, who did not know the Lord at the time, even though so many of them to the glory of God are beginning to know the Lord. I come from a generation of idol worshippers, and there are a lot of things that stood against um, the destinies of people, stood against marriage, stood against people getting married or having children within the confines of marriage or being prosperous in everything that find themselves stood up against people going to school but my mom was like that um angel the lord put in my life to steward what he wants to do and so i came back home in um um in jesus two. i was in jesus two, um and i came back home in jesus two or jesus three i came back home in 1998 and um at the time i was still staying with my grandparents but i went to spend a few days with my mom and then she i slept over that sunday and then we went to living faith church together and i gave my life to christ on that day i did not really understand the magnitude of what um 
I, I, I did on that day, but that really defined, began to define my life and set me um, on the path to fulfilling God's assignment for my life. What am I saying? God has a plan for your life. You might have come from a generation of idol worshippers. You might have come from a generation, you know, of, um, of, of people who did not fear God. You might have come from a generation where um, um, idol worship seems like the order of the day. I have experienced this, you know, in the midst of what happened, God found a woman of God. God found an auntie in our family. God found her and saved her very early. Very, very early. Uh, um, Pastor Mrs. Comfort Olofu, I continue to bless God for her life every day. That God got her out among you know my aunties uh, and my uncles got singled her out and she was saved she went to church so you know saved so early went to church every day was so committed to the lord and i really believe that along with the prayers of my mom her, her sacrifices, you know, her prayers have, have come to play a part in how many of us have, uh, you know, have come to know the Lord. And so I want to celebrate that great woman of God today. She's just not um, an auntie to me. She's a mentor. She's, you know, you know, uh, she's a mother in the spirit. She has literally carried us irrespective of her age in the family. And so the prayers of my mom, the prayers of my auntie, the prayers of so many people who do not know have carried us up to getting saved. And so I gave my life to Christ in 1998. And one, one key thing for me is that intercession really, really pays. No matter how deep a people are steeped in I do worship it. No matter how deep a people are steep, have gone in immorality, no matter how deep a people have gone far away from God, if God can find a man to stand in the gap, then he's, be he's going to begin to rewrite the story of an entire generation. That's what the Lord is going to do when he finds a man who stands in the gap. You know, that was what happened with Abraham. These were people who were, you know, sinned so much against the Lord. Their sin was abominable. But Abraham continued to say the Lord, to the Lord, if you find 10, will you, will, 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 you, will, you still, will you save this land? You know, he continued to stand in the gap to intercede. And so there are so many families who are looking for intercession. Assessors. There are so many families who are waiting for gap standard. I would not be here today if I did not have a mother as an intercessor. I don't think she really knew much about the Lord, but my mom knew one thing to do. She knew how to pray. The only reason that I am who I am today is because that she raised an altar comes other gap standard gap stand, standards and intercessors in our family who prayed and so one key thing for me during my childhood is that one the lord saved me from destruction the lord saved me and my siblings from harm the lord you know preserved us the lord continued to use men and women to continue to seek preserve our destiny until we got saved And so I want you to, to as a brother, what could you be doing today that could change an entire generation, that could rewrite the story of an entire generation? What do you need to do? Do you need to fast? Do you need to pray? Do you need to study more? Do you need to go to school against all odds? Do you need, do you need to take on the role of the breadwinner as a man in your home so that the next generation to come will be able you know we that seed will be sown you see what happens with generations is patterns patterns we see this happen with a father we see this happens with a mother and because the, the son is looking at the father this is the way he has learned to live because the mother is looking the, the child the daughter is looking at the mother this is the way she has learned to live and so there are so many mindsets that has been sown in the mind 
And so God kept me through the prayers of my mom, of my auntie, and so many other people. And at 17, and 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 and, and when I I I was um in Jesus too, um about 12 years old, um God saved me, and here I can testify. And so I'm so grateful um to God for how He kept me through all my my years as um a a a a, a child. You know, through the pain of separation, through the pain, you know, going through, you know, being apart from your mother and your first home. And I know that you seated here today before watching me, and you might be saying to yourself, um, I, I cannot not amount to anything because I, I I come from a broken home because I'm so broken. But you see that the Lord can really help you um, um, go, go through the season of your life that irrespective of your pain, the Lord can use it to use it to build your purpose. And so my greatest purpose has come from a place of pain, from a place of rejection, from a place of where I'm seeking love before God. And I'm so grateful to to the Lord that I am saved today. I'm so grateful to the Lord that he carried me from childhood unto salvation. I thank you so much for listening today. Next week, I'm going to be sharing my story. I really want to make this video short. I'm going to be sharing my story from when the Lord saved me. What began to happen? How did I even, how was I even able to grow as a Christian and to navigate through the trials? And temptation. I'm going to be sharing all that um, next week. God bless you. Please share this video, like this video, comment, share this video to as many going to bless a lot of lives. It's going to bless so many lives. It's going to bless so many lives. Irrespective of where you've been, what you've done, your qualification, God saves it from. But God saved me. And today I'm here being able to bring forth his word and break it to you. And so get as many people as possible to what is life. God bless you. Look